Statistics and Excel. Typing mathematical equations in Microsoft Office. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with Statistics and Excel. Although we'll be using OneNote here, we'll still talk about Excel. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're in the icon left-hand side, OneNote presentation, 1410, typing mathematical equations in Microsoft Excel tab. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. We're also uploading transcripts to OneNote so that you can use the immersive reader tool, changing the language if you so choose, being able to either read or listen to the transcripts in multiple languages, tying them into the video presentations using the timestamps. OneNote desktop version here in these presentations, we've been thinking about statistical concepts using Excel as our primary tool to understand those concepts as well as test those concepts out. Now, although Excel is clearly a great tool for understanding statistical concepts, it does have its downsides, even if we understand how to use Excel well, because it's basically another tool in the toolkit. And then we have to think about when we have these multiple great tools, which tool do I need to use for any particular problem when I'm trying to understand any particular concept? In this case, we're looking at formulas, equations. So if I have an equation, if I have a formula, how should I go about representing that equation? And uh, how should I go about basically solving and working with that equation? And obviously our options could include, we could simply write down the equation. And then if it's an algebraic equation, we might try to solve for it algebraically. There's still a place for that, even if we have Excel, because uh, sometimes that's just the best way to do it. The, another way that we might do it is we might put it into Excel. We might use that equation, but then work through the algebra in a table type of format in Excel, breaking it out in Excel, kind of like you'd see in like a tax return. And that's just another way to look at the data. And it's quite useful oftentimes when you write it down algebraically, your mind is thinking algebraically. When you break down a, a formula into like a tax return kind of format, right? You break down each algebraic step into a table as if you're making a worksheet, then that also makes you think differently a, a, as well about the concepts uh, that are included in the formula. Clearly Excel also has functions for many things as we have seen like the mean or the average, the quartiles, uh, the medians and so on. So when we use a function in Excel, that's a great tool as well, although it cuts out a lot of the steps so that it makes it so that sometimes those steps make it easier for under, understanding what's happening as well as they sometimes give us useful information that we might might need or might be useful for us for whatever decision we're making. So right now we just want to think about how to write down the formula. So this is a formula that's basically representing an average where we're going to say x bar uh, equals and then we're going to say x1, x2. These are going to be the data points in a data set up to xn. xn then representing how many data points are in the set and then we divide it by n. That's our average, right? We're going to add up all the numbers in the data set x1 to xn and divide by how many numbers are in the data set or n. We can also represent that this way. So X bar or the mean or the average equals, and now we've got this sum uh, icon here, 
and we're going to say n is going to be representing the number of items that we're going to sum up the list of numbers where we start with i equals one and then we go x of i so we're summing up in the numerator again just like we have up top and then down below we're going to be dividing by the number uh, of items uh, other things that it's useful to be putting in like anything whether it be excel or it be some other office product sometimes it could be a little confusing to type something like an x bar or we're going to be using sigma a sigma squared a, a mu the greek letters so sometimes it's useful to be able to type those out obviously if we had if we were writing this algebraically out by hand you have some pros and cons the pros are it's not too difficult to write an x bar by hand and an x sub one and that kind of stuff but your handwriting might not be great and it might be nice to have it in uh, excel as well in a formula format so that we can then work through it uh, within excel uh, and then if you if you're writing in something that you want to give to someone else then oftentimes you're in something like this one note or you might be in microsoft word or you might be in excel and you want to be able to write maybe a formula that looks like this or you might want to be writing something down in your uh, equations that have these kind of Greek letters. So how do we do that? Let's do each of these formulas. I can go to this one up top. We go to the insert tab up top and then in whatever Microsoft product you are in, you'll typically have this equation item here. So if we go into the equation item, it pulled in an equation bar down here. Let me do that somewhere else so it's not on top of this thing. I'll go to insert equation so there's my equation bar now when you're in this equation bar you've got all these tools that you can use that will allow you to basically build any kind of equation that looks kind of like this you can build it with these tools but the easiest thing to do which is obviously what i go for here is going for the ink equation so if we just go into the ink equation it gives you this thing to write the equation in and it tries to interpret it if you have a pen like thing like a like a notepad or something then it'll be even easier i'm just doing it with a mouse and i can still do it and my writing's terrible and i so so let's try it out so if i i'm gonna put an x on this side x bar and so you can see it writes this out up top and then i'm gonna say it's equal to and it looks like it's picking it up and i'm gonna say x sub one <laughs> And so it's picking it up here plus X and then we'll say sub two. So that looks good plus X and see me writing with the mouse looks pretty much like I write with, with my with my pencil. It's like about the same and then it's nice and neat up here. So it's really helpful plus and then dot 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 and then we're gonna go plus x sub n boom and so there we have it and that whole thing over an n and so there we have it so now you've got x1 x2 x3 to x n over n is x bar so then we just insert and it does it for you and then of course you can you can copy and paste this we can do our adding making it larger and oftentimes it's useful to put a color around it so you can just put a color in it just like anything else this one's one note has a little bit different kind of kind of color scheme uh than some usually you could just in color the box but you know i can make it red <laughs> you could and you could copy it too you can copy it and paste it as a picture which sometimes is useful because that kind of makes it hard-coded you know let's do the other one just to do this one to practice this one if I and then I'll show you how to make these letters so if I go to the insert again and I'm saying let's do another equation and then I'll do I'll do an ink equation of that one ink it out and so we're gonna say this is gonna be x uh didn't do an x i'll make it really large because this is gonna i don't want it to think that this is on the top or the bottom of the other equation so i'm gonna make that big because then i've got this whole thing on this side equals 
and then this sign so I'll put that right here boom and then I'm gonna put the end on top it'll kind of mush it to the side over here good but I'm gonna start on top I'm gonna say the end is on top now sometimes it doesn't pick that up until I do the rest of it and then the I equals one on the bottom and then I'm gonna put then X sub I over here and so now it picked up that n on top put the x sub i so it looks good now i'm going to put the whole thing over n and so there we have it and so i think that's what we wanted it to do so i think that looks good i'm going to say insert and boom there it is again it put it inside of this one which is not what i wanted it to do but we'll keep it there for now. That's the idea. I shouldn't have put it inside here. I'm frustrated with myself. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? Oh, it still works. Okay. So then when you add these things, uh, this one's a little bit tricky because you have to put like an X and then, and then add the bar. So it's like a combo thing. So you've got to go to the insert item uh, up top and then we go to, let's see, insert. We're gonna to go to then the symbols and here's like the, the most common symbols, but I'm gonna go into the symbols here and say, I want more symbols. And then I usually have no normal text. So it doesn't do any wacky thing, nothing weird on the text. And then I'm gonna go over here and say, we wanna be combining uh, the, the data marks uh diactri diacritical marks i don't know i can't say that but anyways we want this thing over the top here so that's the one so it's the combining overline and i'm going to say okay boom and so there we have it so now you've got the x bar all right so then so that one's could be useful a lot of these are going to be greek letters so so sigma uh, i think one way you can do the sigma is you can actually type an s because it's a greek s apparently i'm not a greek specialist here but and then you can put in a symbol up top uh or you can type in up top here symbol to change the font and it makes it a it makes it a sigma so that's one way you can do it that, so that's probably the easiest way but the thing that probably comes to mind first is to enter the symbol insert symbol more symbols and now you want the the greek stuff over here greek and coptic so we're going to say that this is going to be i already have it down here but let's see if i can find it for us up top don day uh it's all right, I finally found it. It's like finding it's like finding Waldo over here or whatever. The guy with the hat and the funny striped. So here it is. Boom. So there we have that one. And so you could do that a couple different ways. And let's make that a little larger. And then sometimes you might want to have the squared. So I can do the same thing. So I'm going to say insert symbol and now it's in my favorites so i can do a sigma insert that and then to make it squared one way you can do that is you can put a two next to it see now it changed hold on a sec uh so then i what i did right there is i said undo so it tried to predict what i wanted it to do and i didn't want it to do that so i hit undo and so now it's just a sigma and a two i'm going to select that two now right click on it and so it's not in the right click you go up once you can go up to the top uh in the home tab and then i want to make it a superscript so here's the one uh the the superscript boom so that puts it up top there now if you're in excel you can right click and format the the not the cell but just like that one thing and if you right click on it and format it then you'll find that superscript as like a check box so that's how you can get that one. We'll see that symbol in future presentations. And then a mu uh, is actually an, a Greek M apparently. 
So I could choose a Greek M and I could choose make this the font a symbol and not that's not right symbol and then it's not doing it symbol there it is and it changes it to a mu so I could do that or of course I can find it in my Greek letters up top so I can go up into the insert symbol and more symbols and now I'm in uh, the normal text Greek and Coptic and now I'm looking so I already have the mu down here but again let's see if we can find it uh, up top for us another where's Waldo search because I can't I don't know my Greek alphabet I apologize but I there it is of course it's right there next to the to that the thingy right there all right so let's insert that one I knew that I know what I'm talking about with the Greek alphabet let's make it large and so so there we have that now so those are just you know some of the symbols that we'll be using when we'll when we take a look at some of our equations and it's quite nice to be able to type out say an equation in this type of format in excel or something like that and then take that equation and break it out uh possibly in excel like like either with a function uh to do it quite easily in excel or you can put it in like a, a table type of format which is quite nice or again you might you might it might be still valuable to break it out you know algebraically which possibly you could do in excel but that would be easier possibly to do still on uh, a by hand type of process